So Jalen from The Bar on the Bookcase tagged me to do his new original tag, which I loved, enjoyed every second of it. I kind of wished he could have made and consumed <laughs> all of the cocktails he mentions because that would have also been <laughs> very fun to watch. But um, yes, I am so excited to do this. I have here my little shaker and my glass um, because I feel like it wouldn't be appropriate to uh, do this tag without having a drink of my own. So um, fun fact about this specific shaker, I actually got this for my birthday when I was like 10. Um, I was obsessed with making um, non-alcoholic beverages and um, I needed to up my game, obviously, and I was like, Mom, Dad, I need one of those martini shakers, please. Like, this is all I want for my birthday. So, um, she's been with me for uh, many years at this point, and um, now there's alcohol in here. <laughs> so, um, the drink that I am going to be consuming is actually, uh, you could say I made it up. Um, <laughs> I just happen to have a... Like, I want to say it's like a Venezuelan lemonade because it's essentially a cube of cane, like just raw cane sugar that you dilute in a huge pitcher of water. Um, and then you let that dissolve and then you just add a bunch of lime juice and it's essentially like a lemonade, Venezuelan lemonade. Um, so I had that already in the fridge. So I figured I would just add a little shot of tequila and um, make it a drink. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to be consuming. Let me show you. <laughs> this is so fun. All right. Okay. Here we go. Cheers. Mm, absolutely delicious. All right. Let's resume. Okay. So the first question is, um, or I guess the category is old fashioned. Um, a historical fiction recommendation. Um, so this one was easy because I've already talked about it, but I would have to say uh, the Wolf Hall uh, trilogy by, what's her name? Hillary. Hillary Mantle. Um, I talked about this because I read it in February and it's a uh, historical fiction novel, obviously set in Tudor England and it follows um, Oliver Cromwell's uh, journey, or I guess not Oliver Cromwell, Thomas Cromwell. <laughs> it follows Thomas Cromwell's life um, from when he uh, was a young teen to when he ends up being the right hand of Henry VIII and his involvement with um, getting Henry VIII to marry Anne Boleyn. So yes, Tudor England, if you're a fan of that um, time period, that book is phenomenal, thoroughly enjoyed. I'm not usually a historical fiction reader, but um, I got really enthralled in the story. Um, and yes, I highly recommend it. So give it a whirl. It is chunky, I will say, but uh, it's worth every page. <laughs> Okay, the next one is a sidecar, a book with a strong supporting character. So for this one, I picked uh, Days Without End. It's also kind of like a historical piece, I guess you could say. It follows um, two gentlemen throughout their um, life, I guess you could say. Uh, we've got the leading character whose name is... Okay, his, sorry, I wrote, <laughs> I wrote down some notes because this book in particular I read a while ago, but it's the one that came to mind. Just needed a little refresher. <laughs> so um, these stories uh, written from Thomas' perspective, but Thomas um, basically it takes place in the 1950s in the United States um, and they are comrades in war. Uh, Thomas and his partner John Cole and they have this beautiful bond. Um, they're obviously romantically involved um, It is a queer love story <laughs> and um, I just thought that John Cole was such a lovely man um, The relationship between the two was just stunning. Um, Sebastian Barry, that's the author, just does such a beautiful job of um, 
showing the reader the beautiful bond that these two characters share and the experiences, the intensity of their lives, um, as well as just um, how they are as uh, father figures because they end up adopting a um, First Nations gal throughout their journey. Um, it's also very uh, cinematic. Uh, the author does such a beautiful job of describing um, the U.S. landscape, but that's irrelevant to our prompt. <laughs> I'm going off topic, but yes, I have to say that John Cole was a beautiful supporting character to Thomas, our main um, guy. So yes, I loved that book. It's a very uh, slow read. Like it's not like a plot driven book. Um, it's more just a character analysis of these, uh, Thomas as well as, uh, John Cole. So yes, I highly recommend that one. And it's got a beautiful duo. All right. The next one is Manhattan. Um, and it's a book set in New York. This one was so easy for me. Um, it has to be a little life. Uh, that book follows the life of a group of men who meet in college. I don't know why I'm giving you the synopsis of this novel because everyone under the sun, if you watch booktube, you've probably read or heard about this book. But um, yes, it follows the life from uh, your early adulthood years all the way up to when the characters are around like middle age. Um, and it's set in New York City. It also situates you so well in that city. It gives you the na specific names of the streets, um, the architecture, the neighborhood. Um, descriptions are really beautiful. So you truly feel like you're in the city following them so closely. And um, the author just paints such a vivid picture of um, where the characters are uh, situated that um, I really appreciated that apart from obviously how beautifully um, these characters are discussed and um, you just love all of them by the end and then you feel alone and sad <laughs> come the end of the novel. But again, I am getting off track here. So we're talking about Manhattan and New York City. So that's that's what I picked, A Little Life. Okay, the next one, um, Espresso Martini, book that kept you reading into the night. Um, for this one, I picked Normal People. Um, just because I was, again, so enthralled with the story that I just needed to know how this book was going to end. And I remember pulling almost an all-nighter. I think I finished it at like three because I was just like speed reading the last third of it because I was like, what's gonna happen? Are they gonna remain together? Are they not? Is she gonna go with him? Is she not? What's gonna happen? So yes, normal people. I feel like that's not a very exciting answer because it's not like normal people was like a particularly like thrilling, crazy book that you just like needed to know what happened. But for me, I guess it was. <laughs> this one is a book that left you disoriented. For this one, I picked Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I got the author right there. Um, yeah, this book is super trippy. Um, I don't want to give anything away because I feel like for this book, it's better going into it, not knowing very much, but it was just very trippy and disorienting and, um, was very interesting to read, but it definitely left me be like, be like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Pardon my French. But um, yes, I'm not gonna say anything else because I feel, like I said, it's better to go into it not knowing very much, but um, it's definitely disorienting and weird, but I liked it, so I would recommend. <laughs> okay, the next one, Long Island Iced Tea, a book that is doing too much. Bonus points if it works anyway. Okay, for this one, I picked Detransition Baby because I love that story, but holy moly it was like a clusterfuck <laughs> like a lot of things were happening we've got um a uh trans couple uh amy and uh why am i blinking i just read this hold on we're back <laughs> amy and reese are a uh trans couple but um amy uh decides to detransition and so Ames ends up uh, getting his 
boss pregnant. And so we are then thrust into this journey of um, Ames navigating this new life and identity, as well as questioning whether he wants to be a father or not. But then not only that, but then he wants to also have a family with Reese, who's always wanted to be um, a mother and take on that role and identity. So he decides to bring her into the fold along with um, the woman that he got pregnant. But on top of that, there is a cheating scandal that then kind of rocks the boat even more. <laughs> and so you're just like, wow, there's a lot of moving parts here. You start off being like, I wonder where this is going to go. And then you keep on reading and things start to get even messier and more complicated. And you're like, oh God, like, I don't know how the author is going to wrap all of this together. And then towards the end, there's that cheating thing. And you're like, whoa, oh my God. Okay. Let's just keep reading. Um, <laughs> and then at the end, you're like, wow, that was crazy in the best way possible. Like I really enjoyed it. Um, but I just thought there were a lot of things going on and I was kind of impressed and anxious as to how this was all going to come together, how the author was going to lead us through, uh, this messiness. Um, but that's life also, you know? Um, so yes, the transition baby is what came to mind instantly. And, um, bonus points because it worked and I really enjoyed it. So yes. Okay. The next one, a Negroni book with a love triangle. Um, I picked Margaret Atwood's, uh, the heart goes last. It's a dystopian novel where, um, I think it's set in the States or Canada, but there's been a economic collapse and people are struggling to survive. And this company, engineers this program where it's an enclosed community where you essentially don't really have any agency, but you are guaranteed life essentially. And all of your basic needs are uh, promised to be met with the condition that for certain periods of the year, you are to go and work at a prison and be imprisoned voluntarily essentially. Um, and you share your house, your dwelling with a, a family or a person, um, which they inhabit the house when you are in uh, prison. And then halfway through the month or wherever, whenever you essentially switch with that person and you now live in the house and then they uh, do their time in, in prison. So the couple that is living in this house, um, the woman ends up, she's married. And so they sign up for this program because they're really struggling and they're assigned a house and she ends up having an affair with the other person who lives in that house when her and her husband are technically supposed to be at the prison. So yes, if that sounds appealing to you, I highly recommend this book. My friend Zoe, who gave this to me, she did not love and I can see why, but I personally found the story really interesting, the concept really appealing. Um, and that little love triangle just added to the appeal. So yes, that is what I picked. All right, the next one, Bay Breeze, a book with light, chill-hearted, heartwarming vibes. Um, I picked Nick Hornby's uh, High Fidelity. Uh, I loved that book. That was like, I was watching a movie. I kicked back, enjoyed myself, maybe even poured myself a little glass of wine while I was reading it. And it was very funny. Nick Hornby, I think just writes very like lighthearted, fun reads from my understanding. Um, and yes, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, dialogue was hilarious, very easy, breezy, um, kind of a fun summer read. I read it while I was on exchange and it just kind of brings me good mems, you know? Uh, the next one, uh, Dark and Stormy, a book that's dark, thrilling, and menacing. Bonus points if it's setting matches. Um, this one, I, wait, did I miss a question? Am I getting a little lit? God, I'm so cringy. <laughs> okay, no, I did not miss a question. All right, Dark and Stormy. Um, I picked a thriller called um, The Kind Worth Killing by, 
Dear Swanson, so this book I read a while ago, like by a while, I mean several years ago, but I remember me really enjoying it. I used to be really into like psychological thrillery kind type books. I remember this one in, in particular really stuck with me. So we are introduced to a man and a woman. They meet in a uh, lounge, an airport lounge, and one thing leads to another and the uh, man confesses to this woman that his wife is having an affair and that leads to um, them planning her death. Um, I'm not spoiling anything by the way. The book uh, tells you that very early on and um, things just pick up from there and it's pretty crazy. It's quite a wild ride. Um, it is very thrilling for sure <laughs> and it's very dark. So um, again, I'm not going to say very much about this one because I think it's more exciting when you go into these types of books not knowing very much. But yes, that is uh, definitely a dark, thrilling read and there are some uh, environmental elements, cinematic elements um, that match the tone of the book, uh, which makes it... Um, kind of even spookier. <laughs> so we're gonna give it some bonus points because sometimes the environment does kind of match the mood of the mood of the book. All right, for the last question, we've got a martini, a classic recommendation. And I'm gonna go for um, 1984. I did not read this for school. I don't even think I read, I don't even remember what I read <laughs> in high school um, in English class. God, that's horrible. But I did not read 1984. Um, I read that on my own because I felt like I missed out. <laughs> I had some FOMO. So um, yeah, I really liked this book. Um, highly recommend if you haven't read it already, although I presume uh, at least some of you probably read that in high school. Um, so yes, 1984 is my classics pick. So yes, that is all. Um, I really enjoyed making this. Thank you so much, Jalen, for tagging me and for even like watching my videos. <laughs> I'm very flattered. Um, anyone who's watching this, go ahead and do this. Um, as long as you make yourself a beverage, it doesn't even have to be alcoholic. Um, but yeah, make yourself a beverage, sit down and uh, do this one. <laughs> um, I'm excited to see other people's um, picks for these questions. Uh, super fun tag, very innovative, and thanks for watching. Cheers! <laughs>